today we'll be looking at climate change. And the first section is on why is weather in the UK becoming more extreme? Over the past few decades, the UK has experienced more extreme weather events, such as heat waves, heavy rainfall and flooding. There is a strong evidence to suggest that this trend is driven by a combination of climate change, urbanisation, deforestation and natural variability in the climate itself. So climate change is causing global temperatures to rise, leading to more extreme weather events such as heat waves and heavy rainfall in the UK. The UK Met Office reports that on the hottest day of the year in the UK has increased by at least one degree Celsius since the 1960s and the number of heat waves in the country has continued to increase. Additionally, the amount of rainfall during extreme rainfall events has increased by 17% over the last 100 years. Urbanisation is causing more flooding in the UK. The UK Environmental Agency reports that there's around 5.2 million properties in England that are at risk of flooding, and this number is expected to rise due to urbanisation and climate change. A study by a by Newcastle University found that a, the risk of surface water flooding in urban areas has increased by up to 30% in the last 50 years. Deforestation also has major impacts, particularly in tropical regions, and it contributes to climate change and also affects patterns of weather in the UK. As we know, trees play an important role in regulating the Earth's climate by absorbing carbon dioxide from the atmosphere. And without them, the amount of greenhouse gases in the atmosphere will increase, leading to more extreme events. And research from the University of Leeds found that deforestation in the Amazon could cause at least 20% reduction in rainfall in the UK, leading to much drier summers and increased risk of heat waves. Additionally, a study by a European Geosciences Union found that deforestation in Europe could increase the likelihood of extreme weather events such as flooding. There's also natural variability. So according to the UK Met Office, natural variability plays a a role in extreme weather events in in the country. For example, the jet stream, a fast moving current of air in the uppermost part of the atmosphere, can vary in position, causing weather patterns to shift and leading to extreme weather events such as storms and heat waves. So as extreme weather events become more common in the UK, it is important that individuals and communities take steps to prepare and protect themselves and by taking action now we can help to mitigate the impacts of extreme weather events in the future. So a typical exam question on this could be something like this. Describe the possible effects of climate change on the UK for marks. And they'd probably give you a graph or a chart to look at. And that will be a cue for you to figure out what kind of impacts there might be. So for this particular question, you'd like to uh, think about the economic effects in particular, but also the environmental effects as well. So economic effects in terms of it could be for Uh, people who've got their own farms or they've got their own businesses, they might have uh, a loss of earnings. Um, If they are living in a rural area where they're reliant on tourist income, if um, that that might dissuade um, people from coming over and visiting the area. 
You also have um, some positive environmental impacts on the UK, particularly in England. Um, the southern areas may be able to start growing uh, more Mediterranean crops. So in a way, that could be a positive. One of the social impacts could be health could be affected for people um, as more um, diseases may be able to uh, migrate their way upwards from Mediterranean climates into, into the UK. So we might start to see things like malaria coming across. Um, environmentally, uh, the impacts would be that the UK will get a lot warmer, you'd have a lot more flooding and drought. Um, you might have a situation where vegetation uh, might struggle to grow, um, particularly if you look at deciduous trees, for example. Um, but then on the flip side, they might we might be able to start to grow our own oranges and um, vines. So that, you know, that could be a positive. Um, the likelihood is that coastal flooding is probably going to increase and the most vulnerable areas are going to be along the east coast of the UK. So for you to get three to four marks, you need to consider at least minimum one effect really well explained. But my suggestion would be talking about a couple of different impacts uh, for this particular question. Okay, so let's move on to the next uh, next section. So what is the evidence for climate change? So climate change is one of the most important environmental challenges of our time. And there is an overwhelming um, body of evidence now, scientific evidence, that supports uh, this happening. The evidence comes from a wide range of sources, including observations of changes in temperature, sea level, as well as ice cover, and as well as historical climate records and computer modelling on future climate change. One of the most compelling pieces of evidence for climate change is the rise of global temperatures themselves, so since the mid 20th century, global temperatures have been increasing at a rapid race rate. According to NASA, the Earth's average surface temperature has increased by about 1.1 degrees Celsius since the late 19th century, with a majority of that warming coming in the last few decades alone. This warming has attributed to the increase in atmospheric greenhouse gases, which trap heat from the sun and warm the Earth's surface. Another important piece of evidence for climate change is the increase in sea level. So sea level rise is caused by two main factors, the melting of land-based ice, such as glaciers and ice sheets, and the thermal expansion of ocean water as it warms. According to the IPCC, the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, sea levels have risen by about 15 centimetres over the past century and are projected to rise by up to one metre by the end of this century. Melting of ice cover is another, ev is another evidence of climate change. According to the National Snow and Ice Data Centre, the Arctic ice, sea ice, has been declining rapidly since the 1970s. The minimum extent of the Arctic ice has increased, decreased, by an average of 12 point eight percent per decade since 1979 and this melting of ice cover is not only affecting the wildlife but also contributing to sea level rise now we're using more and more often computer modeling to predict what could happen in the future with regards to climate change and these models are helping to us understand the earth's climate system 
and are used to simulate the effects of different scenarios of greenhouse gas emissions. So the models predict that without significant reductions in greenhouse gas emissions, global temperatures will continue to rise. And as a consequence, we're going to start seeing more se severe heat waves, droughts, storms and other extreme events. So it's really important that we look at all the evidence. It's very obvious that we have a situation where our planet is warming up quite rapidly. And it will have an impact on not only um, extreme weather events, but also impact uh, where communities live, where they can grow crops, where habitats live. Maybe they will have to move as well. Um, maybe some species may die out as a consequence. So we need to, as a bachelor of urgency, start thinking about how we can actually reduce this from happening. So in terms of a nine mark question on this, so describe the environmental and economic consequence, the environmental and economic consequences of climate change for the world. Um, you will be asked a long answer question for this. So you'd have to know things like the IPCC. You would need to know um, the uh, COP Paris Agreement. You need to be aware of it or be able to talk about it um, for these sorts of questions. But also you need to know some evidence for why uh, climate change uh, is, or how climate change may be economically and environmentally affecting um, communities, not only in the UK, but also uh, internationally. So your, in terms of content, there's quite a range of things that you talk about. Um, so you can talk about economic impacts or effects, such as, again, um, uh, economic loss, income being lost by uh, by livelihoods, by people going to work. It could be businesses, depending on what kind of business they have. Um, it could affect the types of crops that we grow in the UK. It might mean that living in the Mediterranean might become very difficult um, and people living there might have to migrate because they can't grow their crops anymore. Um, environmentally, you could have loss of coastal areas and habitats. You could talk about some warmer areas in Europe, particularly the northern parts. So those are the sorts of things that you need to talk about for top ban answers. And if you address them with evidence, then um, you'll, you'll end up getting a good mark. So in terms of the nine, eight to nine marks, you need to have really detailed knowledge and you need to give examples. So you might say something like that there will be many environmental changes Lots of low-lying coastal areas will be flooded, such as East Anglia in the UK and much of the country of Bangladesh. If it gets hotter, some crops will increase in yield, like potatoes and outdoor tomatoes, benefiting from, for farmers. A wide range of crops could be grown, such as vines or oranges in the south of England, which again could increase uh, farmers' profits. And there could be greater risk of forest fires and house the Houses of Parliament could be flooded, potentially. Low-lying islands such as Maldives and um, the islands in the Pacific would disappear and areas of tropical rainforest would be under threat. Icebergs could pot potentially break off from the Antarctic ice sheet and they would contribute fresh water again into uh, the oceans, increasing their volume potentially. And then people who work in uh, cold environments, uh, alpine environments, for example, in ski resorts, may not have uh, jobs anymore because there may not be any snow uh, up there. And of course, protecting major cities like London uh, could be very difficult if sea level rise continues at the rate it is going at at the minute. So if you talk about those sorts of things, you have a good chance of getting a high mark. I would suggest that you write this question down and then attempt answering this question using your notes, using a textbook. If you're unfamiliar with the evidence, um, 
go back and there's quite a few videos that I've posted previously on these topics. So go and have a look at them too. So what are the natural and human causes of climate change? Climate change is a complex phenomenon that has been shaped by na both natural and human factors. And the Earth's climate has always been changing with fluctuations in temperature and atmospheric conditions over millions of years. However, the pace at which it's happening is ha has increased significantly and the magnitude of the current climate change uh, are large largely uh, attributed to our activities as human beings. So natural causes of climate change include the variations in solar radiation, also volcanic eruptions, and changes in the Earth's orbit and axial tilt. So you need to be familiar with the orbital theory, also known as Milankovitch cycles, and it suggests that the Earth's orbit around the Sun, as well as its axial tilt, can cause long-term climate variations over thousands of years. You also have sunspot cycles, which occur every 11 years, and they can influence the amount of solar radiation that reaches the Earth's surface and can cause short-term climate fluctuations. Volcanic activity can also contribute to climate change by releasing large amounts of gases and particles into the atmosphere, such as sulfur dioxide, nitrous oxides and volcanic ash. And these particles can reflect sunlight back into space and cause a temporary cooling effect of the Earth's surface. An example of that would have been Mount Pinatubo when it erupted back in 1991 in the Philippines. It reduced global temperatures by half a, half a degree Celsius to a degree Celsius, um, which was a, a significant impact. So, however... Over the past century, human activities have become uh, more dominant in the course of climate change. And one of the most significant human causes is the emission of greenhouse gases, such as carbon dioxide, methane and nitrous oxides, which trap the heat in the atmosphere and contribute to global warming. And these gases are emitted through activities such as burning of fossil fuels, um, coal, oil and gas for energy, deforestation and industrial processes. Other human activities that contribute to climate change include agriculture and land use changes, which can release greenhouse gases and alter the reflectivity of Earth's, the Earth's surface. So, for example, the cultivation of rice paddies and livestock farming release methane, a potent greenhouse gas, while deforestation reduces the amount of carbon dioxide that can be absorbed by trees. So, climate change has played a significant role on shaping our climate, our planet's climate, over millions of years. However, the changes that human beings are making in this era are nothing compared to anything that we've done before. And potentially, um, the impacts of this, uh, we, we, we don't know uh, what, what will happen, um, or we know that it will be extreme um, reaction from nature, um, which could impact how and where human beings live. So a typical question uh, that you might get up on the exam might be explain how volcanic activity and orbital changes may cause long-term climate change. So for you to get three to four marks, you need to have linked statements that talk about the natural factors affecting the long-term climate change with accurate use of geographical terms. So for example, you will be talking about Milankovitch cycles. You'll be talking about axial tilt. You'll be talking about long-term climate variations over thousands of years. So those sorts of things, um, well explained, should get you into the top band. Um, you might also talk about other things. So, uh, for example, changes from a circular to an oval orbit can affect the amount of sunlight the Earth receives. You could talk about it taking 100,000 years for the Earth's orbit to change from being more circular to more elliptical and back again. 
You could talk about the eccentricity cycle coincides closely with alternating cold glacial and warm interglacial periods in the Quaternary era. Um, and of course, um, uh, ish, uh, the Melanchthon cycles as well. Um, you can also talk about volcanoes and how they contribute lots of ash into the atmosphere. And as a consequence, this can reduce the solar radiation coming in to our planet um, and thereby uh, reducing temporarily uh, our planet's um, temperature. So how can we manage the impacts of climate change? Climate change is an issue that affects all of us and its impacts can be felt around the world. And these impacts include rising sea levels, making frequent and intense heat waves, droughts, floods and storms. It's essential that we take steps to manage the impacts of climate change to protect our communities and the environment. One approach to managing these impacts of climate change is through adaption. So adaption basically means taking steps to adjust to the changes that are already happening and those that are expected to happen in the future. Adaption includes a range of different methods such as improving water systems or developing early warning systems for extreme events and designing buildings to withstand the impacts of climate change. So here are some specific examples of adaption strategies that you must learn for this section. You don't have to learn all of these, but I would say two or three would be really handy. So the first one, building sea walls or levees to protect coastal areas from sea level rise and storm surges, developing drought resistant crops and improving irrigation systems to adapt to the changes in precipitation patterns, creating green spaces and urban forests to reduce urban heat island effect and improve their water quality. Four, you could develop early warning systems and emergency response plans to prepare for extreme weather events such as hurricanes, floods and wildfires. And finally, fifth, design buildings and infrastructure to withstand the impacts of climate change, such as heat stress and flooding. Another approach to managing the impacts of climate change is through something called mitigation. It's a key term that you need to know. So mitigation means taking steps to reduce greenhouse gas emissions to slow down and eventually halt the progress of climate change. Mitigation measures can also include using renewable sources of energy like wind and solar, reducing energy consumption through energy efficient measures and transition to low carbon transportation options like electric vehicles. So let's have a look at five options. Number one, we could transition to renewable energy sources such as solar and wind power to reduce greenhouse gas emissions from fossil fuels. Second, we could improve the energy efficiency of buildings, vehicles and appliances to reduce our energy consumption and lower our emissions. Number three, we could promote low carbon transportation options such as public transport, cycling and electric vehicles to reduce emissions and from transportation and we could also implement policies to reduce deforestation and promote reforestation to absorb carbon dioxide from the atmosphere and finally encouraging businesses to uh, and individuals to adopt sustainable practices such as recycling composting and reducing food waste to reduce the emissions and waste that we have it's essential that we use a range of these different methods, adaption as well as mitigation methods to build resilience in all of our communities to better cope with the impacts of climate change. And another way that we could do that is by just locally increasing our green infrastructure, such as parks and green spaces, and implementing sustainable land use practices and promoting 
community-based approaches to disaster risk reduction. So in terms of managing climate change and uh, the impacts of it, it's not something that you can just do at a local level. You have to do it at national level and also certainly at international level. And by taking action to adapt and mitigate the impacts of climate change, this will help us to protect our planet, not only for now, but also for future generations to enjoy as well. So a typical exam question on this could be describe what is being done to respond to the threat of climate change at an international level, eight marks. And if you don't know any particular international agreements or you don't know the key terms like IPCC or the Kyoto Protocol or the G20 London Summit or um, COP Paris or um, COP Glasgow, you're going to struggle to get up into the top band uh, marks for this particular question. So you've got to make sure that you have clear statements throughout your answer and that you refer to particular international strategies. You could talk about agreements between countries to reduce carbon emissions and the fact that many richer countries have signed things like the Kyoto Protocol and agreed targets for their carbon emissions. You could talk about you could talk about the Paris Accords that were signed in 2014, um, and you could talk about subsequent conferences, COP conferences that have happened since then. You could also talk about things happening at a local level. So, for example, in London, they put in place the congestion charge, and now they have the ultra low emission zone, ULES. Uh, which is now expanding to all of Greater uh, London. So that's going to be a way of dissuading people from driving into London or switch their cars. Particularly if you live in London, you will have to switch your car because otherwise you'll be paying £12.50 just to drive your car in London every single day. Um, And then if you're going into central London, it might be another £15 a top for congestion charge. Of course, another argument could be that, you know, that's just going to push people out from those areas. Um, But that's uh, not what you need to talk about in this question. So switching to renewable source of energy will also be an option. Whether that's wind, water, uh, burning less coal and oil will be better as it reduces our carbon emissions. So it's really up to you what you talk about. But the question is asking about at an international level, and you must talk about specific international accords uh, in your answer to be able to access those top landmarks for this. If you've got any questions, please put them into the chat now, or if you've got any requests, let me know in the chat um, before we move on to wrapping this up. Okay, everyone, so it's a pretty short topic, climate change, but there are lots of little details that you really need to be familiar with. Make sure that you learn your international accords and agreements that have happened and you're able to refer to particular years when they happened and their impacts. Those are going to be very important for the long answer questions in the exam. Of course, you must practice writing exam questions. Please don't just spend your time making cue cards and revision notes, they're helpful, but the best way to learn is by doing exam questions themselves. Because if you can't answer them under time conditions at home, then you're gonna really struggle on the exam itself. So better to know in advance than to do it later. Make sure that you're annotating the question before you start writing your answer. Make sure that you write in third person. And the key thing here is the more data you can put in for those long answer questions, facts, figures, dates, things like that, then it shows the examiner that you know your stuff really well. And if you structure it well, 
So you don't just have one giant paragraph going down your page. You have two or three really clear paragraphs which are talking about a particular point. Then that will help you to get really, really good marks in the exam. So if you have any uh, questions or any requests, uh, then please let me know. I'll be posting some more sessions in due course, and um, I hope to see you guys on there soon.